everyone, it's Ivan from Kitbadger.com here to tell you about a recent adventure over on the Cabinet Divide Trail up kind of Idaho-Montana border as well as give you my loadout. We'll go ahead and kind of start with the what and the why. Ultimately, I was having a conversation with Bill Rapier of Amtec Shooting, Amtec Blades. Turns out he lives up in northern Idaho also. And he said, hey, what are you doing on this? Kind of Friday, Saturday. I was like, probably nothing. He was like, want to go on a 30 mile backpacking trip? I was like, okay, why not? Mind you, like, I'll go out and I'll go hiking, go backpacking, and stuff like that. Usually it is centered around going out, go create content, and stuff along those lines. Generally, a pretty relaxed pace. And I knew this was probably not going to be too relaxed of a pace. This is basically a training hike that he was going on to get himself ready for the Sniper Adventure Challenge coming up, which I believe is over in Montana, I think late summer, like real early fall. So I was like, all right, sign me up. And so it's gonna be him, myself, and one other buddy as well. So I started looking at what I usually carry when I go backpacking, which is usually way too much in part because i'm carrying a tripod a camera all the accessory gear whether it's like power supply all these different things to include usually a bunch of stuff for review and i was like you know what i'm not ready to commit to probably a pretty good pace for a solid 30 miles with a lot more stuff than i probably need not to mention just timeline like looking at kind of when we're leaving when we're probably going to get back i was like we're not going to be filming too much out there either. So I said to myself, I'm use this opportunity to go ahead and try out this new pack, Shadow Pack by Prometheus Design Works. I believe it's a 24 liter. And I was like, all right, let's, let's pare this down and see what kind of weight I can get down to and go from there. We'll go ahead and start with what I ended up wearing for that adventure. Knowing we weren't going to be gone too terribly long, basically Friday afternoon through essentially Saturday evening, more or less. I was like, okay, no point in bringing a bunch of superfluous stuff. But I did end up bringing a good hat that could basically keep some sun off me when I didn't want to be in the sun. Definitely key. And as far as socks, I ended up running these guys. These are point .6 or made by point .6 former kind of owners of Smart Wool before they sold it off and I think Timberland, that's who owns it. They basically ruined it. So I ended up running these guys. They are active compression socks and they're not very thick or anything like that. But I think they did a really good job for me basically covering all those miles and yeah, just helping push that blood out as far as lactic acid buildup, things along those lines. As far as a shirt, I wanted something that was gonna basically wick. And to that end, I ended up running this guy. It's by First Spear. It's kind of one of their base layer weights and it is long sleeve merino. This actually did a really good job for me. Part of the reason I chose it too is because it kept the sun off me. Last thing I wanna do is get sunburned and the last thing I wanna do also is continually putting sunscreen all over my arms and stuff like that. So. I ended up running this, did a good job for me. Definitely ended up like sweating into it, but it did a good job pulling it away and drying out pretty quick. And then lastly, as far as pants, I ran these guys. These are the Prometheus Design Works. Uh, I always get lost. These aren't the Odyssey, I don't think. I think these are the field pants, maybe. I'll put it down below because I can't remember it right this second but these are actually pretty cool. They have some stretch to them. I haven't done a full review of them yet, but they also have a lot of different pockets through here, which is pretty handy depending on how you want to carry stuff. I definitely had the pockets loaded with a bunch of stuff that I wanted to either have on my person or have access to, whether it was a knife I was carrying or my phone for taking pictures, stuff along those lines, as well as some fire starting stuff really easy way to carry everything there and with that stretch mobility yeah these were uh, these were really great on the trail i will say definitely sweat into them 
by the time I was done, somewhere down towards the bottom, there was like a bunch of white salt that had built up there. But yeah, these ultimately ended up doing a good job for me. As far as the truly mundane underwear, I actually had some underwear that were sent to me by tactical distributors, some of their battle briefs, basically synthetic underwear, and they did a good job. I wore all of this stuff pretty much the entire time. Took it off at night, but um, yeah, pretty much what I rolled in. Lastly, rounding out kind of clothing, I ended up rolling in these boulder boots. I've had these for so long. There's still some traction on the bottom of them, but yeah, I ended up rolling with these guys. I, at no time, really felt I was at a disadvantage. Like I needed something bigger, heavier, or more ankle support or anything like that. And yeah, I just rolled with them. Did a good job for me. I will say I really enjoy having a really wide toe box because my feet are wide. Coming down at the very end, I don't know that I necessarily could have like laced them tighter and it would have alleviated it. I think honestly my feet were just beat up like about mile mark 25 and my feet were just warm. I wasn't necessarily getting hot spots to where I ended up with blisters or anything like that, but my feet were warm because they were just kind of moving some in them. But I don't know that I would have really done it any other way because most shoes for me are pretty tight and yeah, I definitely enjoy minimalist stuff. As far as the pack, this guy right here, the Shadow by Prometheus Design Works. I've ran it different times without this belt which totally works, but running it with this belt, really nice. Being able to take a bunch of the weight off of the shoulders. Additionally, just the way this is cut, the way the shoulder pads come down and the way you can strap it here, it does a really good job of actually uh, just under load carrying stuff. The way I had this set up was actually running this belt in here. I ended up carrying this guy largely because one, this belt allows for it. There's slots on either side where you can actually get something up to the inner belt. And so I ended up running this ALS. And the reason I ran this ALS is because it has like the drop to it. And in addition to that, it was pretty much the only ALS I had handy. That wasn't for like a RMR cut Glock, which I pulled the RMR off for another project. And so I just happened to have the ALS running this guy, SIG, or I'm sorry, SIG, HK P30 with like 20 round, 21 round mag, something like that. I was like, you know what? Between this and the other guys were there with their guns, if we couldn't solve the problem between those three guns, the problem wasn't going to get solved. So I ended up running that with respect to the wilderness and wildlife. But yeah had this pack basically set up. And one of the things that we had to take into consideration was water. We were gonna be going, or we did end up going up largely along ridge lines. So if you needed water, you could find it, but it was a jaunt. So bringing enough water from the word go was definitely important. I'll say straight away, this is absolutely a pack, I think largely geared towards everyday carry. So to that end, I want to see how to do in the back country on overnight. And the way the layout is of the pack internally, as far as storage compartments, definitely lends itself more to the end of everyday carry. But as you can see, I obviously made it work. I knew we weren't going to be gone too, too long. And with that, I want to make sure I had just kind of those bare essentials that I would need. To that end, I want to make sure I could actually hopefully sleep comfortably even if weather came in. And so one of the things I brought to, whether I was gonna put it on in the morning when it was cold or at night when it was cold or sleep in it, depending on how cold it got, I ended up bringing this guy. This uh, by Prometheus Design Works. Thing did a great job for me. I definitely put it on a couple times. I didn't end up sleeping in it. The one thing I will say with it is it doesn't compress, which isn't a big deal. There's basically this whole outer panel and so I kept it in there. When I needed it, it was really easy to just pull it straight out, throw it on, get nice and toasty, and then when I was ready to take it off, I could shove it back in there. 
While it doesn't compress, it is wind stopper. And even if this gets wet, it'll still keep you, still keep you relatively warm, which is definitely an important factor. I took this, definitely did use it. Glad I brought it. As far as sleeping, you want your sleep. You don't want to be miserable sleeping. And to that end, I ended up bringing this sleeping pad, thermo, or sleeping pad, Thermarest Z Fold with these outdoor research straps. The bottom of this pack actually has laser cut pals like this. So I was able to really easily just strap that thing on there. It also made it nice sitting down, you could actually lean back and this would kind of pick up your pack. So it'd take some of the weight off of it if you weren't actually gonna take your pack all the way off. Did a great job strapped to the bottom for me right there. And then when it comes to actually sleeping, well, yes, when it comes to sleeping, sleeping system, stuff along those lines, I wasn't really ready to skimp there. So I ended up bringing a straight up down sleeping bag. This I've actually reviewed before. It belongs to one of my boys. It is a Spike Lake by Big Agnes, 15 degree bag inside this waterproof compression bag. And with this being a 15 degree bag, I was like, you know what? I'm probably not gonna be cold in this. And on top of that, this actually has kind of waterproof treated down, waterproof treated. Basically the down can get wet and it won't clump into just a solid ball. So you'll still have some loft. So I was like, you know what? This is probably the best thing because I'm not bringing a tent. Did not have the space, did not care to carry the weight. So I ended up taking that. The one thing I did bring as a moisture barrier in case I was gonna need it was a emergency blanket. Didn't need it, didn't need to break it out. I had it in case I did though. I will say waking up after that one and only night up on top of this ridge line, there was definitely frost kind of covering quite a few, like frost on my sleeping bag that had formed kind of down by my feet. But at no point during the night did I wake up cold or anything like that, which getting sleep is important. To that end, definitely brought a little bit of uh, warming layers. These AG watch caps by Prometheus Design Works. Part of the reason I like carrying them and wearing them, especially in the back country, is this folds all the way down. So once I get all nice and cozy inside my sleeping bag, I will fold this all the way down and pull it down over the back of my neck and over my eyes. And yeah, stay really nice and toasty with that. One thing I did bring that I didn't end up using was these gloves by Arcteryx. Leather palms, some sort of shell material on the back. I think they were probably at one point waterproof. Pretty sure they aren't anymore. Brought them, didn't need them. Glad I had them because it sucks having cold hands, but they were in my pack, didn't take up too much space or weight, so not a bad deal. Water, obviously super important. And to that end, I ended up carrying four liters. These pockets, they stretch out. And while you can actually push in and kind of take up a little bit of internal space, if it's all filled up and you jam like a one liter Nalgene in here, this will expand enough so that it won't take up your internal space if it's already full which is really nice. So I had a one liter Nalgene over on one side and then the other side was another one liter water bottle, but it was actually insulated, which getting really fond of insulated water bottles, especially doing things up here in the winter or the summer where you either want your water hot or cold and they do a good job to it. For water, I ended up bringing a SteriPen, ended up using it when we purified some water in the lake, nice and fast, basically stir this thing around a liter for one minute and you're good to go. And on to the next one, no issues whatsoever. As far as other supplemental water, I guess, because again, we were gonna be on ridge lines. So to that end, in the very back here, there is a pocket made specifically for hydration bladder. And I ended up running this MSR dromedary bag. 
They're, I think it's about a little over two liter bag. And then there's a port, ran it through here, get access to that hose. Also brought both these guys, my super old school smart wool long underwear. I threw them on at night, that one night we slept. I stripped down, threw these guys on, and threw my clothes in the sleeping bag with me. Definitely some different schools of thought as far as changing out or keeping whatever clothes you're already wearing on and through your heat basically pushing moisture out of it. But I ended up throwing these on for that night and slept really nice and cozy. Also in here, again, kind of geared towards everyday carry. You have this panel that comes out and in it I have a bunch of different first aid stuff to include occlusive dressing, combat gauze, compression gauze, some different types of medicine, and then just even the simple mundane stuff as far as band-aids and like some uh, anti-inflammatory stuff. Some other pill, Benadryl, that's what it is. That's in there also. <laughs> My buddy made fun of me as far as what I packed for food. He's like, you are basically packing like an eight year old. And I'm like, you know what? Yes, I am. What did I bring? Well, I brought pretty much Snickers bars and peanut M&Ms. These are the remnants of what's left. I think I went through, basically stopped at a dollar store before we kicked this thing off. And I bought like a six or eight pack of these little tiny peanut M&Ms. And then I think another pack of like these little Snickers and then four full size Snickers. And I pretty much plowed Snickers and peanut M&Ms for about 30 miles. I will say I also brought a, I think the wrapper's still in here, little thing, uh, Black Rifle Coffee Company. I think it's their black powder. It's basically their instant coffee and had that that first morning. It was awesome even though it was cold, it was still good. And then I also brought some real food, some actual protein. I'd cooked up a bunch of uh, venison the night before, and I had that in basically like double or triple bagged in here where my other Snickers wrappers are now. And yeah, 30 miles, powered pretty much by Snickers and deer meat. As far as some other just kind of small items, of course, brought some toilet paper, brought some sunscreen, small tube of it just to basically make sure my face was covered. Everything else was pretty covered wearing that long sleeve shirt by First Spear. And I knew we were going to be hiking into the night and I didn't really want to bring a headlamp. So what I did bring was my everyday carry light that I've been carrying around for a while now, which is this Surefire Stiletto. And what it allows is while well, you can like mash the back of it and you get all the lumens, you can also click through and it'll stay on and basically cycle through three different settings. There's the brightest right there. And the way the pocket clip is made, it basically sits essentially bezel up in your pocket. But when you want to, you can go ahead and throw a hat on and this guy, will slide right in there and it's just a matter of clicking this on now you have your impromptu headlamp actually did a really good job for me we hiked quite a while at night and I ended up using this combo I think it finally gave out to me or gave out on me rather pretty sure it was on its highest setting too probably about maybe three hours in something like that but I brought a backup, this little guy, which honestly, it can work the same way. I don't think I've reviewed this. I don't think I've reviewed the stiletto yet either, but both of them can basically be used as headlamps. And the other thing I did bring was my little Magpul DACA pouch where I keep my battery backup, essentially a power cell and all my different cords for either USB or like USB micro, I think this is, same with this one, or the charger for my iPhone. And so I simply put this 
as well as my iPhone on the charger at night. Got up in the morning, both were fully charged. I was good to go. Pretty easy power solution. Hey, listen. Take a look up.